wouldn't be a stream in the studio if we didn't have some technical issues. How are you doing? It is Monday evening. We are here to talk about the guitar. Specifically, we're here to talk about some hybrid picking. Before we do get on that, though, I uh, just want to take a quick minute and address the audio levels. Hit the tube screamer, Nick. Uh, I'm guessing we've got probably just a bit too much track, not enough guitar. I'm just going to hit that track one more time. Uh, I'm going to ask James to turn the guitar up a little bit, and then we'll get yourselves a proper intro jam. Here we go. <laughs> Guys, let me know if that's if that's working for you. I think we've got a little bit too much backing track in the go still, but it's okay. We're all good, man. We're we're surviving. So anyway, listen. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Monday evening. We are here to talk about the guitar. We do it every Monday evening. If you're one of our returning cadre of stream guests, hey, listen. It is great to have you back along. We're going to address our audio issues as we go along. James, our very talented uh, production manager, is on the case. We're going to get things sounding absolutely primo for you guys but in the meantime i want to thank you very much for taking this opportunity to join me it is uh, always a pleasure doing these streams for you guys it's great having you along if you are a brand new viewer i want to thank you for taking the chance on a hey stream that you haven't watched before i'd love it if you drop us a comment let us know if what you're enjoying what you're finding useful if you have any questions drop them down below because of course we will be answering your questions later on at the top of the hour before we do though a couple of things a couple of ways you can help us keep the lights on so to speak metaphorically we have all the lights on but you can help us keep them on by doing the following if you go to this url down here this url will take you to gi plus where you can go and get more guitar lessons that are just huge in both scope and scale there is so much stuff in there you wouldn't believe we have lessons from tom quayle andy wood andy james myself rick graham uh who else do we have ian semo teaching you slide guitar we have the entire catalog of giorgio Cerci, uh michael caswell you name it we have lessons from all of these incredible guitar players and many more covering everything from improvis improvisation easy for me to say to theory to rock fusion blues jazz you name it right go there get some lessons. Is Nick talking behind the closed door? Can you guys hear my voice, by the way? Let me know. It is a velvet shirt, uh, in case you're wondering. I'll try my best with the voice. I can keep turning this up as we go. So, um... Yes, other ways you can help us if you're getting some use out of these streams, if you're enjoying what we're doing, you can give us a thumbs up on whatever platform you're watching on. You can also drop us a comment down below because the algorithm loves comments. So anyway, listen, let's get cracking with the stream, so to speak. But before we do, I just want to tune in and check in with our stream commenters because we have loads of them. Uh, let's just see who's in the house. So David Yates is with us. Uh, he says, hello, Marcin. I uh, hope you're well. Hello, Nick. Hello, all. Hybrid picking. I'm a complete novice at that. Uh, I've got my baby soft fingertips. Well, we're going to try and fix that today, right? Hybrid picking is a really useful technique, and people make it sound a lot more complicated than it is. I think it's one of these things, like economy picking that we discussed last week, where the name makes it sound way more intimidating than it actually is. It's actually really quite simple, and we're going to demystify it today. Uh, who else do we have? Marcin says, David Yates, uh, I'm good, man. Thanks, man. How are you doing today? Been playing my Ibanez this whole week, so it's Strat Day today. Can't 
get that beauty collecting dust. I agree. Strats are wonderful. We love a strat. We've got an SE Silver Sky sitting just off camera, which is, you know, it's the PRS take on a strat. Let's not mince words. And I just absolutely adore it. There's something about that classic 63 single coil thing. It's beautiful. And you've picked a great guitar for what we're doing today, Marcy, and that is going to make an awful lot of sense. Who else do we have? Let's see. Fog Hornish is in. Uh, evening friends, my two goals for this year are to improve fretboard navigation and pick cleaner. Both going really well. Hey, tough to hear that, man. Especially after last week's brilliant lesson. Down with pick slanting all the way. Fog Hornish, that is really, really good to hear. So what we're talking about here is, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, is uh, we did some stuff on economy picking, but this is kind of like a bigger, broader topic that ties into a course we have called Picking Strategies Part One, which essentially allows you to discover, or helps you at least to discover what your personal preferences are when it comes to picking, what your natural tendencies are, and how to leverage those into a working picking style instead of learning kind of a style that maybe doesn't fit your doesn't fit your personal preferences, doesn't, it feels a bit alien. We've all had that moment where you've tried to pick like somebody else and it just feels a bit weird. And then when you start doing things your own way, it kind of works, but maybe there are some stumbling blocks. Picking Strategies Part 1 is the course for you, if that is you. We'll talk more about that later on, but I'm really pleased to hear that, man. Uh, I finally took the plunge, uh, says David Yates. Finally took the plunge, got one. Uh, talking about the uh, Ibanez AZ, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, gr oh, wait a minute, is this, is this an AZ 7 string, I'm guessing? Well, yeah, I got a 7 string. Wow, that's pretty cool. I do like a 7 string. I've been gassing for a 7 string myself. Chuffed to hear that. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? Jimmy is in the house. Uh, my friend Jimmy from Preston. Jimmy, looking forward to coming playing with you guys soon. Jimmy's a really good lad. Uh, today is a strat day for me as well. Good lad, we like some strats. All strats all the time. I'm playing Kim's lovely PRS. You didn't think this was mine, did you? I've got lots of PRS, but... Uh, Kim also has, Kim has so many PRS, so many guitars. And when I'm here, it's an excuse to play Kim's guitars. Kim's sitting over here, by the way, so everybody say hi to Kim uh, as you go. We maybe get Kim to shout hello in a little bit. Uh, who else do we have? Bernard is in the house. Uh, hi, Nick. Uh, hi, all. Uh, not always here for the live, but I still never miss an episode. Hey, man, that's really good to hear. I appreciate that. Uh, it's good to have you on board for the live broadcast this time around, though, man. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Uh, who else is in the house? We're skipping over some stuff, unfortunately, because we want to get cranking. Blue Sumlin's here. Uh, D40 is here. Lovely to have you on board, boys. Cranker Tom is in the house uh, playing his PJ300. Oh, yeah, man. If that's what I think it is, it's one of the Paul Gilbert guitars. Right, happy days. Love a bit of that, love a bit of that. So we've had some comments about the um, the audio. Hopefully we'll fix that as we go on. But before we do, just want to take a moment and remind you that if you guys are uh, looking to develop your picking more and in more depth, uh, the way you do it or the place to go and get it is this course. This is Picking Strategies Part 1. This is our comprehensive guide to all things picking related. When we come back, we'll be talking about some economy picking. But I have a, sorry, hybrid picking, my mistake. But I have a question for you. Right, and I want you to let me know in the comments uh, as this little trailer is running. Right, I want you to let me know in the comments. Do you do hybrid picking? Is it something that you do in your own playing? If you do, which fingers do you prefer? Do you tend to use just your pick and middle finger? Do you use pick, middle, ring? Do you use all three? Are you pick and pinky? Some people use. Let me know in the comments what your experience with hybrid picking is. When we come back, we'll be discussing it in considerable detail. But before we do, this is Picking Strategies Part 1. <laughs> Does your picking feel uncoordinated and sometimes you miss notes or fluff transitions from string to string, maybe a little bit like this? When in reality what you want is smooth and easy and transparent feeling picking, a bit like this. Or maybe you've been sold on the idea that there's one specific way that you have to pick on the guitar and everything else is wrong, but that particular cookie cutter approach just doesn't work for you. It feels unnatural. It almost feels like you're fighting your own body to try and make it work. Well, Picking Strategies Part 1 is the course for you.
In this course, we explore the many different ways that you can form a full and complete and comprehensive picking approach by examining the various strategies used by some of the greatest pickers of all time. And there are a whole bunch of strategies out there, and I guarantee there is one that is going to work for your preferred picking mechanics, the way you prefer to stand or sit with the guitar, the type of guitar you play, the type of music you play, there is a strategy for you. We're going to explore all of them and I'm going to show you how you can take a single solo study and play every line within it using all of the six picking strategies that we look at in this course. And of course, this entire course is available as part of your GI Plus membership. So if you're not signed up already, what better excuse do you need to sign up today? So that's Picking Strategies Part 1. Guys, we've made an effort during that trailer to try and resolve the issues we have with the vocal mic, so let me know if you can hear this dialogue mic okay. We're going to be balancing this as we go on, so fear not. Let us know in the comments if the audio is working for you, but I just want to uh, take a minute and uh, take a look at what you guys are saying about your hybrid picking. Uh, we've got a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of comments already, so let's see what we've got going on. Uh, James is, uh, I believe, first-time commenter. James Mool, if I'm not mistaken. If you've commented before, hey man, it's great to have you but if you are a new time a new commenter first time commenter hey listen we love first time viewers thank you so much for taking the time to comment i appreciate it uh looking forward to exploring hybrid uh concepts as possible yeah dude we're gonna get you doing some hybrid concepts as we go uh tony gonzalez does pick and middle but not much that's interesting okay uh pj says i use either a pick or ditch it and finger pick. That's interesting. That's definitely an approach that works. Uh, Steve McDee says, no hybrid picking yet, but early days. Marcin says, uh, I like playing chords with hybrid picking. Very nice. Pick, middle, and ring while shredding only the middle joins in. So that's cool, right? We we'll like that. Uh, Sit Regard Slayer says, I use hybrid picking, trying to develop the technique uh, using mid uh, using mid and ring. I'm looking forward to see, uh, to use pinky too. Yeah, pinky is a very valuable finger for the hybrid picking thing too. Uh, it is, uh, it's good crack, right? We're going to get into that. So who else do we have? Blue Summon uses all fingers for hybrid. Depends what I'm playing. Man, hey, good on you. That's pretty cool. We like that. Brain Dog says, no hybrid for me yet. Don't worry, today is the day. Uh, never really tried hybrid picking, says Keith MOF. Uh, depends. Oh, my, yeah, Cranky Tom uh, uses middle and ring finger, but preferably the middle finger. Depends on what's needed. Country ish stuff needs both uh, most of the time. Yeah, for sure. So, country is one of those kind of like realms where people tend to, to associate hybrid picking with, uh, with the style. Now, I'm kind of a believer that hybrid picking is style ambivalent, and I think it's just something that we can use regardless. But for country, yeah, you kind of got a hybrid pick. It's it's part of the game, if that makes any sense. Uh, so who else do we have? Uh, Future now. Hey man, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming and joining us. Uh, Cowcat says depends on the phrase or riff. Whatever extra fingers needed besides pick. This is good. We like this. Okay. Um, Nick, who popularized hybrid picking in rock back in the day? No one did it other than country players. It's an interesting one. Um, I wouldn't like to say that one player in particular did it, but the player for me, the player who um, got me into the hybrid picking game was Richie Cotson. Um, and that really got me thinking, you know, I would see the way you play. This is when he still used to pick. Um, I'd see the way he played and I'd see all these lines and I'm like, that is a really useful way of playing that stuff. I used to have this strange misconception that hybrid picking was somehow cheating because it was easier than doing certain string moves. We'll get to that in a bit, but I think that's the deal. Uh, appreciate that. James, first time commenter, enjoy your work on Lick Library. Hey, thanks, man. I'm doing some more Lick Library stuff as we go. So, uh, actually shooting some lessons tomorrow, and I've done a whole bunch um, over the last couple of weeks. You can expect to see those uh, very soon. Nice. Uh, Juan has uh, used hybrid picking because he studies classical guitar too. Maybe not in the same way as electric virtu virtuosos like Tim Henson. I play eight string guitars. Oh, wow, dude, fantastic. We like a bit of that. Uh, triple progressions, says Mark McNish. We're into that. Uh, Jimmy uses pick, index, and middle. Uh, pick and index. Middle and ring have to catch up. So I'm guessing that's the idea of taking pick and then ditch the pick and use like 
thumb and index. That works pretty well. That's the thing that we can do. Uh, who else do we have? Only middle from James. Uh, Juan uses pick, middle, and ring. That's cool. We like that. Uh, Larry Warren. Oh, by the way, Juan, I think you're... Uh, t tell me if I'm pronouncing this right, by the way. Juan is, I think... A first-time commenter. Hey, thanks for joining us, man. We love first-time commenters. Uh, who else do we have? Larry uses pick, middle, and ring, and pinky. Was how I was taught to play finger style. Uh, I'm incorporating it into my lead playing. That is nice. We're into that. Uh, <laughs> I saw I saw what you wore and thought I'm stealing that. Referring to Richie Costin, I totally did. Like genuinely. Like you know when you see a guitar player and you go, I'm going to be that guy. Uh, I did that with Richie Costin, hundred percent. It was crazy. It was like proper boy crush at first sight. I've done it with a few guitar players over the years. Steve Vai was a big one. Joe Perry, when I was a kid, like Joe Perry was the guy. I saw Joe Perry and went, that's for me. Uh, I'm going to be Joe Perry only tall. Um, anyway, so listen, right? Uh, Brent Hines is a big hybrid man. Just so happens, I, can, I, can I reach over and show you? I've got the Victory Super Sheriff over here. It's literally there. I'm touching it as we speak, but I'm not going to get up and show you. Uh, you guys will see in the video where Brent goes around issuing tone, uh, tone violations. It's a wonderful thing. So anyway, listen, let's do some hybrid picking. First of all, we're going to discuss our terms. So you guys have been like really forthcoming with your comments. There's a real great like kind of uh, spectrum of experience in terms of uh, how much you guys do the hybrid picking thing. Some of you do it a lot. Some of you never do it. Some of you do it... Uh, uh, you know, all of the time, just a little bit of the time, it depends. We're going to crack some of these myths uh, that surround hybrid picking today. We're going to talk about some technique. We're going to talk, first of all, though, about the why and the what. So why is hybrid picking, first of all? Let's go to one of our many close-up cams. We've got a close-up hand cam. So uh, I'm going to bring myself into shot here. Uh, I cannot do that because if I bring myself into shot, I cover up the picking hand. But that's fine. We're going to stick with this. So hybrid picking is, in essence, where we play uh, using a combination of pick strokes and then some combination of fingers from the right hand. Let me show you an example. If I was to play an arpeggio like this, where I, pl I played, uh, let's say an A minor arpeggio, starting on fret number five, I'll go to a clean sound for this, fret number seven on the D string, and then fret five, five, five on the G, B, and E, I could play that using pick, middle, middle, sorry, pick, middle, ring finger, and pinky finger. That would be an example of hybrid picking. Now, I could also play this using a sweep. I could play it using alternate picking. I could play it using just finger style. There's so many ways that we could play this. So it begs the question, why hybrid picking? What's the deal with hybrid picking and why would we do it? Well, there's a few reasons. First of all, the most obvious one is convenience. And we're gonna get to that in a bit, but I think probably the bigger reason that we might choose hybrid picking over another uh, picking approach is tone. And it's the sound of the notes that we're gonna get. So I've linked down below, by the way, um, a really great lesson in GI Plus uh, of Tom Quayle talking about this stuff. Tom Quayle's an excellent hybrid picker. He tends to just use pick and middle for most of his lines. But he's an outstanding hybrid picker, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and one of the things Tom talks about is the idea of hybrid picking being an extension of your legato technique because of the way it sounds. Now, we're gonna go back to the Guthrie Govan quote that I keep coming to here, which is the sound of plastic versus the sound of meat. So, <laughs> again, try to get Guthrie to call his next album the sound of meat. Uh, I guess we'd probably all just be satisfied if he released his next album, never mind gave it a cool title, but apparently the title for the next album is spoken for, but who knows, maybe Guthrie Govan 3, sound of meat. Anyway, so, the sound of plastic is the sound of a pick, uh, which is this business. <laughs> No prize for guessing I've been doing some Hendrix style stuff. That bend. Just like so characteristically Jimmy. But um, the sound of pick is this clack at the start of all of our notes. If I play a slightly more complex line, I guess we might get something like this. There's an attack the snot of all of our notes that we get when we pick. However, if we were to play using hammer-ons and pull-offs, we get a smoother note, which might be something like this. So you can hear that that has less attack 
at the start of each one of our notes. And that, to me, is the big reason why we use hybrid picking. It sounds different compared to our pick. It gives us some tonal diversity, but it also gives us the ability to sound more like legato playing when we pick a string, if that makes any sense. So that's one of the big reasons, but with this also comes additional dynamic range. So here's a quick test for you, right? Grab your pick. I hope you have your guitar, because we should be playing this together, right? So hopefully you have your guitar. We're gonna go to the close-up cam. Uh, so if, um, if we play kind of like a, let's just take a quick easy phrase. Let's try playing an A minor pentatonic. <laughs> And if I were to play something like this, where I was to play fret number seven on the G string, fret five on the G string, and then fret number seven on the D string, I want you to play this with a pick as hard as you possibly can and as soft as you possibly can. We're going to play like this. That's as hard as we can play it. This is as soft as we can play it. Pretty soft. Pretty hard. Now with a finger, let's do the same thing. Let's play it as hard as we can. I'm literally clipping the input of our quad cortex doing that. And let's play as soft as I can. It's so soft, right? Here it is with a pick, with a finger. Crazy soft. So hybrid picking doesn't just offer us the tonal advantage, it also offers us an expanded dynamic range in that we can pop notes to really get a big, brutally loud transient at the start of our pitches, but we can also play notes exceptionally softly with hybrid picking in a way that we can't do with a pick. Now you may say, well, I'll just do finger style. Well, you know, that is a viable strategy, but the great thing about hybrid picking is it allows us to do this and still have access to all the things that a pick can do, which is give us at the start of a note. It can also give us things like pinched harmonics. We can strum, we can do down picks. We can do all of the things that we like to do with picking. We can do sweep picking, alternate picking, and we can blend that with our hybrid picking. So this is why I'm kind of big on the whole hybrid picking thing, as opposed to the ditch the pick and do a uh, finger style thing. So let's play, let's do some stuff. And what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna begin by giving you some rudiments that we might play with hybrid picking. So let's start by going to the picking hand cam. Now what you might see here is I'm gonna be playing some stuff on the D string and on the G string. So you'll see that on the D string, I'm gonna play using my pick. And then with my G string, I'm going to play using an upward pluck of my middle finger. Now you'll notice that what I'm not doing here is using my whole hand to pluck the notes. I'm doing it with a curling motion of the finger itself. Now let's play this on a couple of notes. Let's play it on uh, fret number seven on the D string, fret number five on the G string. So D seven with a pick, G five with a finger. So we do pick, finger, pick, finger, pick, finger. Let's just do that for a moment. So we're playing pick, finger, pick, finger, pick, finger, pick, finger. Let's try it together once again. Now, that's a cool lick in and of itself, but the next thing we can do with this is we can start to turn it into some more complex musical ideas, let's say, some more uh, fleshed out sort of things. So we're gonna start using a bar for our next little rudiment. It's the same deal, but here what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the same business of playing pick, finger, but the second time we get to our finger note, we're gonna roll our third finger and play fret number seven on the G string. What does that come out as? So we have D7 with a pick, G5 with a finger, D7 with a pick, and then G7 with a finger. So once again, D7, G5, D7, G7. It looks like this with the pick in hand. We get this. Once we have that kooken, we can play some really cool stuff with it. So let's get that into our backing track. And I guess the easiest place to do it is if we do it, uh, you know, we're gonna have to move this up. So let's move it up two frets. Let's do set, let's do nine on the D string and then seven on the G string. So we have this. I'm gonna throw the backing track on. Uh, give us an excuse to balance the audio as well. I'm gonna go back to my dirty sound and I'm gonna show you how I might use this 
in an improvisational context. And then we'll play back and forward and we'll see if we can start using this to make some music. So what I might get is this. That's a cool phrase, I like that. Starting to get some good stuff there, so let's play together. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a chance to play around me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a phrase that starts with this leg. And then I'm going to move somewhere else. I'm going to finish the phrase. I'm playing, in this case, in E minor pentatonic. Our backing track is in E minor. So I'm playing position number four, which is going to be this shape. Let's just go over that together very quickly. So we have 10, 7, 10, 8, 9, 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7. This. Once we've done this, I'm show you some Richie Cotson licks because we're talking about Richie Cotson. Let's play together and let's see if we can get some interesting stuff coming out here. So grab your guitars, we're gonna jam. Let's go. If I play. Your turn. So we're starting with that leg and then we're going somewhere else. My turn. Turn. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up to 12 and 14. Same strings though. Into E minor pentatonic. You take a turn. So here I'm playing E minor pentatonic around fret number 12. And I'm playing something on the middle two strings. So I'll go again. I'm going to go like this. turn and this is just in the middle two strings in E minor pentatonic what I might do next is I might move it to different pairs of strings I might go like this you take a pass you don't have to copy what I'm doing you can just play around with this if you're having fun with this rudiment then stick with it I'm gonna go like this moving it down this time. Your turn. So we're just exploring with this rudiment. We're letting it lead us some places. We're going to start with that because I'm going to show you some more licks. So we've got some questions coming in already. Uh, I'm just going to see about this very, very quickly. Uh, so James is asking, do, do fingernails make it easy to hybrid pick? Uh, potentially, but I don't have fingernails. So um, I'll see if I can show you on the close-up cam. Kind of, you can see, I don't really have much of a nail going on there. Uh, man, I do so much tapping that I can't really afford to have a nail. And to be honest, like nails on fretboards and even nails on strings, they just kind of gross me out. I think it feels weird. I don't like the way it, it feels. So it, it could make it easier. I know Tom talks about having a nail. I don't have one. So um, it's just one of those things. I wouldn't stress about it personally. If you feel like you want to get some nail, then that works. So uh, this riff has always been challenging me if he says uh, uh, riff chord. Here's another one. Um, so uh, David Yates says, I can only do it half your pace, Nick. That is normal because we're doing some fast movement between pick and finger. Let's do another one, though. This is going to give us a little bit of time where we can start to... Remember when we talked about tapping a little while ago? We talked about the idea of buying ourselves some time to change strings because with the tap, we can use that to, to buy time for the left hand to catch up. We can use some hammer-ons and pull-offs to buy some time for our right hand to catch up. So let's do that. Let's do a lick. Uh, let's do it in that lovely first position E minor pentatonic, this 12th fret one. That everyone loves so much, right? We're gonna go back to the G and D strings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a hammer on and pull off. This is one of my favorite licks. You'll see me do it all of the time. And I mean literally all the time. It's like break glass lick 101. And it's a Cotson lick, of course it is. So what we're gonna do is instead of playing just this, We're going to play a pull-off and a hammer-on at the bottom of the lick. So we're going to play pick, fing sorry, finger on uh, fret number 12 on the G string, pick on fret number 14 on the D string, pull-off to 12 on the D string, 
and hammer back on. So we don't need to do this, we need to go ba 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 with our pick. Let's do that first and listen to that gorgeous spring reverb we've got dialed in. So let's do finger pick, ba ba so it's middle pick or strings D, G. If you can do it at this pace, maybe not this, but if you can do this pace, with that big gap in between, you can play this lick. So we're gonna play, and even if you can play a little slower, you can still play this lick. It doesn't have to be at speed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play finger number one, with our middle finger on fret 12 and the G string, we then pick the D string on 14, pull off to 12, hammer back on. We get this. If you're having trouble with that first finger moving, just bar it. It's not quite as clean, but it'll sort itself out over time. So don't worry too much about that. We can just bar if you want to. Now let's use that lick and let's put that in context with our backing track. And then we're gonna expand upon it. I'm gonna show you some of the cool things that we can do. There's a cool thing with a third finger bar that makes this really, really pop. But for the time being, if I play this. Take a pass. Now you may be thinking it's just as easy to pick this, and at the minute it is. But when we start doing some other stuff, your turn by the way. When we start doing some other stuff, it'll all become clear why this is interesting. So let's do one more. This time I'm gonna go to the next two strings. I'll go B string. Your turn. All right, here's a fun trick. What I'm gonna do here, I'll go to the close-up cam so you can see. I'm gonna play this lick, but I'm gonna move the top note by a string. So instead of playing it on the G string, I'm gonna play it on the B string. This is difficult with a pick. It's a piece of cake with hybrid pick and it's dead easy. So let's play with that, right? I'm gonna play it one more time and then you can get a pass. So if I go. Your turn. I'm mixing the rhythm up a little bit there, but you know how it goes. Let's try it again. You don't have to play the same thing as me. And so on and so forth. Now let me show you that lick there because once we've got this on the go, once we've got this thing on the go, um, we can do some really cool stuff where we start to reposition the high note. I'm just gonna hide this real quick. Uh, that comment's been there the whole time. Sorry, David. Um, so what we can do here is uh, we can start to play with where we put the high note. And it's actually really easy to do with uh, some hybrid picking. So what we could do here is we could play, for example, we could play with the idea of a high note being on fret number 12, fret number 14, we could do it again on B fret number 12, B fret number 15, E12, E15, we could play E14, we could play all the way up here, you name it, right? If there's a pentatonic or Dorian note to be had, we could play, let's stick with pentatonic for now, uh, we could play any of those on top of this. So let's do it with, uh, I'll check it out as we go. So let's do G um, fret number 12. So we might get this. Ooh, turn my guitar volume up. Let's do G fret number 14 with my third finger. I'll slow it down a bit so you can see what's going on. So you can see I'm rolling my third finger there to get that note. Here, B fret number fret number 12. If you're feeling dexterous, we can play B fret number 15. We can play E12, E15. And work our way down the pentatonic scale doing this same lick. So we might get something like this. 
which is like super Richie Carson, but also really hard to do with straight picking like this. Uh, blimey, that's hard. Let's try again. It's tough. I can just about do it, but I can't do it at those kind of paces with straight picking. So that's one of the things that hybrid picking allows us to do. It doesn't just facilitate these cool rudiments, it also gives us freedom to keep our pick on a given string and reach out and grab notes on other strings that we wouldn't necessarily grab otherwise. So let's do another one. We're going to play ourselves a little game, right? What I want to do is we're going to get away from these rudiments and we're going to get back into some phrasing ideas. So we're playing an E minor pentatonic. I'm going to give you some notes to reach for on the top string. We're going to reach for potentially E12, E14, E15, and then E17. So what I want you to do with this, with these top notes that we've got going on there, I want you to play me some stuff in E minor pentatonic. It can be anything you want. We can be playing. Absolutely anything you like, but I want you to keep your second finger or third finger, whatever feels more natural, ready to go on the high E string. Just keep it in contact with the high E the whole time like this. You can see it there, right? So what we might get is this. And when you feel the urge, reach for one of those top notes. going to feel a little more artificial than it should right away, but that is okay, right? That's okay. We're just discovering stuff here. This is not me saying you should always have your finger ready to go on the high E string. Absolutely not. But this is a way of discovering some cool phrases that maybe jump some intervals like this. So if I go... Again on other strings, but it sounds kind of cool, right? So let's do it together. I'm going to give you a chance to play with this. Pentatonic licks, reach for those high notes, 12, 14, 15, 17. When you feel ready, it's your turn. I'm going to give you a little longer to experiment with this this time. So make sure you get at least one of those notes in on the high string using your middle finger or ring finger if you feel more comfortable doing that. I'm going to go. Your turn. You can take a little bit longer this time. You don't need to hear me play all that stuff. You can play it loads. Go a little bit longer. And now I'm going to play some stuff again. So this is just literally teaching yourself to reach for high notes with the finger. I'll go. That was a fret there, but you take a turn. That's okay. It happens. We all do it. Anybody who says they don't do it, living. Everyone makes mistakes. We're humans. It's okay to make mistakes. We're allowed. It's fine. It's music. Nobody dies. My turn. Your turn. I overran a little bit there, so you can have a slightly longer one. I'll let you have a bit longer, because I overran. We're going to do something a little more advanced in a moment, but... Uh, Oh, like Dan Smith's in the house, Dan from the Guitar Hour, Dan, it's great to see you, man. It almost sounds tap when you throw it in like that. I dig it. Hey, thanks, man, I appreciate that. It does a little bit, to be honest. Now, one of the things, we've got a question about string muting that we're going to get to next. Uh, string muting is kind of important. Uh, from Sacred Godslayer, who is uh, one, of our, one of our guys, like big, chopsy, 
chops the guitar player. Uh, good question about string muting. Sacred God Slayer, we know, likes to play very clean because he plays the metal, and with all that gain, you need to play clean. So we'll get onto that. But first of all, Dan, uh, hey, thanks for dropping in, man. Appreciate it. Uh, it does sound a little tap, and this goes into this thing. There is a great lesson from Tom Quayle linked down below, by the way. You can check that out. That's part of your GI Plus membership. So it's a lesson down below. It's from Tom's modern guitar series of guitar lessons uh, that are available as part of GI Plus down there, but go and get it after this. Um, one of the reasons it sounds tapped as opposed to picked is because we're using flesh to sound the note rather than pick to sound the note, I think. And this boils down to my philosophy that there are only two sounds, my philosophy, I stole it from Guthrie, but there are only two sounds. There's the sound of plastic, there's the sound of meat, and everything is a derivation thereof. Those are like the family tree where we have like plants, animals, and everything kind of falls somewhere in that, you know, in that ballpark, you know, animals, yes, you have like water buffalo and you also have muskrat and you also have like, I can't think of a single bird, tawny owl. I don't know, they all fall under animalia, but none of them are a palm tree, uh, if that makes sense. So it's getting off into a weird one here, but that's probably why it sounds tapped, I think. I sound tapped talking about this stuff, but hey, never mind, what you gonna do? Uh, oh, here's a cool comment, man. Uh, almost GFX, it's first time I tuned in. This is sick, hey, thanks, man. Consider giving us a subscribe. We do this every Monday if you can believe it, and it's always free. So we do an hour every Monday. Uh, come back and see us next week. It will be lovely to have you on board. I appreciate that. So, okay. Uh, say it regards to this. What about the string muting during large string intervals? My string muting goes to the trash bin. <laughs> I love it. So, okay. This is one of the cool things about hybrid picking is hybrid picking kind of bakes string muting into the technique. So what we can do is if we're muting, I'll show you what I'm doing on these large interval jumps. So pay attention to the right hand. I'm gonna do one that goes, I'll show you this on this cam first. So I'm gonna do one that jumps from the G and D strings up to the high E string. And I'll show you the muting as we go. So what I'm doing here is when I'm getting ready to play this note on the high E string, notice my ring finger that I'm gonna play this with is already on the string. When I mute the G string, I do it with my thumb and I'm ready to pick this note. When I'm ready for this note to stop, the picking finger goes back on the string like this. See that thumb is muting? Now the finger that I picked with is muting. So on and so forth. Um, that is how I do this with string muting. String muting is baked into this. So, Let's do some more advanced stuff. So what we can also do with this is we don't need to limit ourselves to just two notes on the low string. We can put three notes on the low string. So a good example of this is if you know your stretch pentatonic shapes, don't worry if this is going a little over your head, I'm gonna show you a cool one to begin with. Uh, if we took this minor pentatonic, and we took the top two strings from the shape above and below, we can get 10 and 12, then 12 and 15, on both strings, and then 15, 17. Let's pick two pairs of those. Let's pick 10 and 12, and 12 and 15. We can play this shape, which is 10, 12, 15, on the lower string of our pair, in this case it's the B string, or we can play any of the 10, 12, and 15 on the high string with a hybrid pick, like this. And round and round and round it goes, and the same is true here. So on and so forth. When you see me do all that stuff, all that kind of like going off on one sort of thing, it's largely just a combination of these rudiments. It's the two strings on the bottom rudiment. And, sorry, two notes on the bottom rudiment and the three notes on the bottom rudiment. sometimes doubling that little move there. 
show you on this cam. Sometimes I'll hit that a couple of times just to make it more rhythmically interesting. But that laid across a bunch of strings. He's at the root of my Richie Cotton ripoff stuff, which I ripped a load of stuff off from Richie, and that's one of them. He plays it slightly differently, of course he does. I didn't learn his licks, I just kind of got the idea in my head and went, oh, I'm going to do that, that sounds cool. Uh, Richie's got some really, really great ideas for this too. I encourage you to watch Bootlegged in Brazil, if you haven't done so already, or Live in Sao Paulo. It's labelled a few different ways. It's available on YouTube, go get it. He's wearing a red shirt, he looks amazing. Um, the red shirt is not the star of the show, but it's kind of there. So here's another lick that I want to show you with this, right? Here's another lick, which is quite good fun. Uh, ah, could you play a three note per string? Could you uh, play a three note per string lick slower? Certainly can. Uh, it's gonna go like this. So what we might get is. Ooh, let's go. That's it. It's just that round and round and round. And it sounds a little like a tapping lick, but it's not because we can, we're not having to get a right hand on the string, we can just do it with, you know, with our fingers in place. It's a very, very cool idea, but I'm gonna show you one more way we might play this, and then we'll go to the Q&A, right? Got an REH with Richie Cotson. That is a really quite a good one. Like some of the REHs are terrible, but Richie's are, this is great. Apart from the intro, it's really weird, where he's like, huh, Earthshaker. I think this game would be better if it was a Richie Cotson machine. I'm like, oh no, Richie, terrible. The rest of it, fabulous. Uh, anyway, so it's nerd. Um, that's me, not Richie Cotson. But um, we're all nerds on some level. Uh, some of us just hide it better than others. I hide it very, very poorly. So anyway, uh, I'm going to show you another lick with this, right? This is the, uh, the top end of, let's say, the Paul Gilbert arpeggio shape. We're going to do it on a C, because C is fun. But we're essentially playing the notes E, C, G, and E. Those are gonna be frets on the high E string, 12, eight, then the G string with a string skip, 12, nine. We're going back to that thing where it's like, why is string skipping a thing? Why is that something that's like special? Why don't we just do it when we play anyway? Why is, it so, is there some rule that says we have to go to the next string? Or do we, do we move like pieces in chests? It's not how it, how it works. We can play on any string we want. You can skip from whatever string to whatever string you prefer. However, one of the reasons why it's a thing is because it can be technically demanding. And this is another place where hybrid picking really starts to shine. So what I want to do is I want to challenge you to play this lick, right? And this is just a challenge. I'm going to get you to do it while I show you something else in a second. But it's just a fun lick, right? So we have this phrase here. It's eight, sorry, 12-8. And then on the G string, 12, 9. We're going to play this with a sequence. And the sequence is going to be three notes descending, three notes descending again. We get this. And then we're going to come back up like this. So it's going to be... I'll show you one more time. I reckon, I reckon we can play this much faster and smoother with hybrid picking. And we can with, bloody hell that's hard, alternate picking. I think hybrid picking really, really works for this. Now if the pink is a little too challenging for you, feel free to play third finger on the G string. Feel free to do this. I always end up hitting the, the sus4 if I do that, but...
dude, that always feels better to me with hybrid picking than it does with straight picking. Why? Who knows? I think it's the string skip. I think it's not having to maneuver over the strings, certainly not for a single note. I think it sounds cool. Have a little practice on that. We are going to show you one other thing. This is another course that's part of your GI Plus membership. In case you're wondering less about the how to play and more about the what to play, this is Mastering Modes Part 1. When we come back, we'll be answering your questions. So drop your questions down in the comments. It's Q&A when we return. But in the meantime, Mastering Modes Part 1, this is also available as part of your GI Plus membership. Have a little practice on that lick. When we come back, your questions. Modes. What are modes? How do I use them? When do I use them? Well, modes are one of the things that the pros use to add excitement and colour to the guitar parts, and there is no reason why you can't use them too. Now, for some reason, people, especially certain online guitar teachers, love to make modes seem complicated and scary, but I'm here to tell you they really, really aren't. And in fact, if you know the pentatonic scale, I can show you how to play modes with just two extra notes. In this course, I'll show you how to play careless sounding guitar solos using modes without any of the mystery. You'll learn how to play musical sounding solos all across the neck in any key, crucially without sounding like you're just running up and down scales. So, if you're ready to take this next step with me, click the link to find out more. So that's Mastering Modes Part 1, that's available as part of your GI Plus membership alongside Picking Strategies Part 1. Uh, these are just my courses, right? There's so many courses, but these are some of mine, right? Get this. If this is not, I'm letting you in on the plan here. I shouldn't let you in on the plan. I'm going to let you in on the plan, right? So the plan is, uh, I want to give you some courses that, when put together, will build the comprehensive guitar player. We're working on it, right? And I'm beginning with building the comprehensive lead guitar player. So the courses that you currently have available from me, there's Technique Hot Fixes, which is really good fun, right? That's just, just instant wins. Right? It's been a really popular course. You have Mastering Modes Part 1. You have Picking Strategies Part 1. The Ultimate Guide to Melody and Phrasing. And Expressive Techniques Part 1. So we have your picking technique, your expression, your mastery of mode, modes and scales, and also creating melodies. I think those courses alone are probably worth giving us a subscribe to GI Plus, right? The link is down below. I don't normally do the hard sell thing, but I was just thinking about this and I'm like, you know, that's some pretty good stuff. And we have more stuff coming to you. And on top of that, just untold amount of riches of courses from all of our other tutors. Ian Simmo's slide guitar course, uh, Tom's modern guitar, Lewis Turner's back to basics, uh, Rick Graham's guitar roadmaps, um, you name it, right? It's just great courses all around. So anyway, listen, we're going to tune in with the streams. Let's see how it's going on. Uh, Kevin is asking, is this live or recorded? This is live. Hey. Hopefully that answers the question. I had a really, really good um, experience with this, playing a work and men's club in uh, Teesside, I want to say. Um, it might be North Yorkshire, I can't remember, but I was playing a guitar synth at the time. Um, and this was probably about 2004. I don't want to go off on just tangents, but there was a guy, if you've seen guitar synths, you would have remembered them. It's the, the Roland thing where you had a big pickup that you put here. Uh, and there was a huge black piece of ugly that you attached to your guitar. You connected it with a special cable, uh, and then you you were able to play synth type sounds. Uh, and I would use it for playing things like this, you know, the keyboards from Jump or Rebel Yell or whatever I was playing in my '80s rock band at the time. Uh, and this dude comes up to me at the end of the gig and goes, "Oh, your band were good, but I think you'd be better if you didn't use tapes." And I'm like. Tapes? It's 2004. What are we talking about? Tapes. Uh, 2005, maybe. I don't know. And he's like, no, you're using tapes for them keyboards, them organ sounds. He called it organ sounds. I'm like, oh, God, you're joking. I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, I see what you've done there. But it's not tapes. Look, I play it on my guitar. I'll show you. Um, and, you know, I got John, the sound man, to open the desk. I said, John, 
pop the, the synth channel up if you wouldn't mind. And I, I played some stuff and he went, nah, nah, nah. Him over there on the sound desk, he's playing a tape. I'm like, ah, I see. What would you like me to play? I'll play you anything. And he said, well, I don't know, you're playing tapes. And I'm like, well, I'll play Happy Birthday for you. And I played Happy Birthday and he went, that's a tape. And I went, I'll play Happy Birthday on the oboe. Hit the oboe and he went, that's a tape. I'm like, we haven't got tapes of Happy Birthday on the oboe. This guy just wouldn't believe it was live. It was a bizarre thing. Um, but it's a story that stuck with me. Working men's clubs. Uh, in the 2000s, very special time. I know Craig can uh, attest to this. So anyway, listen, we got some great comments, right? Some real cool stuff. Uh, vibrato lessons uh, from Nick and Rick literally changed my playing. I went from random finger shaking to actual sound oscillation. This alone was worth the subscription fee. Dude, that is really good to hear. Vibrato is kind of the game though, isn't it? Like realistically, that's kind of the thing. Um, oh, here's a really lovely comment from uh, JSL21, metal guitarist here, always wanted to incorporate hybrid picking as it sounds badass. Thanks for the masterclass, Nick. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. We do this every Monday. So listen, if you are just joining us, if this is your first time watching, consider giving us a Easy for me to say, consider giving us a subscribe on the Guitar Interactive YouTube. That's how you know it's live, by the way, because I mess things up. Um, on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel, if you're watching us there, um, whatever YouTube channel you're watching us on, I think we go out on mine as well. So uh, hit subscribe and we'll notify you when we're about to go live, right? And if you're not signed up to our mailing list, you can do so at guitarinteractivemagazine.com. There's a link there to sign up for the mailing list. We'll also give you an email when we're about to go live and about an hour before to remind you as well. So you'll get the link, it'll come straight to your inbox, right? It's good to have. So, um, so, <laughs> Kendo, Kendo, I'm not even gonna try and say that, Nakasaki. Uh, that's, that is fabulous. What a great username. Says, that was me. This is a tape. Dude, I'm totally with you, right? Totally with you. So, listen, I'm really glad you guys are getting some new set of GI Plus stuff. Um, had some lovely comments about, I dream of playing like that. Keith, you're too kind, man. I really appreciate that. Guys, I said we're going to do some Q&A. We'll do an extended one next week because we've run out of time. Uh, we've run complete, as I always run out of time. It's one of those things. So... I'm going to play some more. I'm going to do some hybrid pick and stuff. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'll maybe do some uh, some bizarre things as we go. Uh, some lovely comments about GI Plus, by the way. Some guys saying it's amazing value. That's my friend Craig, so uh, I'm paying him to say that. <laughs> Gavin says, I'll definitely be tuning in next Monday. So you recreate Ingwe's tone on a budget. I loved it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I lost a pair of glasses for that video. Uh, but I have another pair, as you can see, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> that was great fun. The uh, I'll be completely honest with you, right? I'll be frank with you on this one. Kevin. Uh, I'll be Yngwie, I'll be frank. Um, hard to say. Um, yeah, it didn't really come out as Yngwie as I'd hoped. It was okay. It came out quite well, but I was like, oh no, there is nowhere near enough game on this martial origin. But we'd committed by that point. I'm like, nope, I'm going to stick with it. I could have done with a slightly gainier martial amp. But what I didn't want to do is just go boss katana. Me and Leander and talked about this. And we just agreed that while the Boss Katana is unquestionably the best choice at that price range, it's just a meme at this point. Everybody goes, oh, just get a Boss Katana. Didn't want to do that. Went with the Martial Origin. Could have done with a bit more gain. But it's cool. It was good fun. The strap was nice. Um, but listen, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate we breezed through this real fast. I'm going to apologize to Brain Dog in particular. Uh, you can always watch this in the replay and catch some of this stuff if it went a little too quick for you, man. I do apologize, but sometimes you just got to breeze on. And my, <clears throat> pardon me, my brain works a little too quick, I think. So let's play. Uh, I'll do some hybrid picking stuff just as some food for thought. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive GI Plus. I will see you next week, 8 p.m. Monday, UK time. Let's play. <laughs> That was a good one.
lots of fun. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Nick Janice from the Guitar Interactive GI Plus. I will see you next week. In the meantime, if you are considering subscribing to GI Plus, which you should be, this is what you get in your membership. At least a little bit of it. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week. My name is Nick Jennison and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Or maybe country's more your bag. Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmore, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Flash, Tosh and Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today. My name is Ian Simmel and I'd like to share with you my course on slide guitar for standard tuning. This is a 10 part series in which we're going to explore the essential slide hand techniques and pick and hand techniques. We're also going to take a look at rhythm playing with the slide. So we're going to look at how to integrate the slide with major and minor triads. enjoyed putting this series together. It comes complete with some backing tracks for all of the example phrases and exercises so you can practice along and it comes complete with tablature and notation for all the example phrases and exercises. So if you've been interested in getting into slide I highly encourage you to check out this course, this 10 part series on slide guitar for standard tuning.